In this video, I'm going into a brand new Reaper install. I'm going through all of the preferences and everything that I think is the most important things to set up to customize it and to optimize it for your own use. Uh, well, really my own use, but uh, yeah, hopefully you'll get a lot of inspiration from this video. Let's jump into it. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with thousands of classes on art, graphic design, productivity, and more. If you want to learn something new, this is a fantastic place to start. I'm always finding new, inspiring classes on Skillshare. Recently, I went through this class, Dirty Design with Draplin, Crusty Techniques to Create Truly Original Work. I really enjoyed this one, especially uh, lessons four and five. Even though I don't use Photoshop, I was able to translate a lot of these ideas and um, put them into use in Pixelmator Pro, which is my image editor of choice. I got a lot of value out of this. And the last one I'll mention here is always drawing how to start and keep a daily sketchbook. This may be a good one to go through with your children. Um, I, my, my son was very interested in this one and it's just presented in a really fun way. If you're looking for a new daily creative habit, I think this is a great class to take. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. If you want to stay on for a full year, it comes down to about $10 per month. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So I've just installed Reaper here. This is exactly what you see when you first launch Reaper uh, for the first time. I have my license installed. And the only other thing that I've set up here is I have two folders set up here for backups and repeaks files in just a temp folder under my username. So you could set that up on yours, and this would be the same thing on Windows. Just uh, set it up so that you have a dedicated folder for Reaper auto backups and peak files. I will show this in this video, but maybe not as, as much detail as previous videos. So I'll just close that. And the only other thing here is that I'm using the dark mode in Mac OS, and uh, Reaper on Mac follows the dark mode setting. So we're going to maximize this window by alt-clicking on the resize button there, and that full screens it without going into full screen, hiding the dock and all that kind of stuff. Let's just go around the interface and change a few things. So I've got the mixer in the dock, and I'm going to resize that. So it takes up about half my screen, maybe right there. Lots of room for inserts and sends in here. I'm going to go to the master track and click this little eye icon here and uncheck the option show multiple rows of tracks when size permits. Let's just add in a bunch of new tracks. What is what is the shortcut for new track? Command T. We're actually not going to change any of the keyboard shortcuts for this or very few of them um, because yeah there's just so many that I would need to change um, but we will change a few things here and there. Uh, the first thing we're going to do here is add in some tracks. The default is Command-T. I think that's a weird shortcut, but I'm just going to add in a bunch of them basically until my mixer is full. And just so we can see the difference between the two settings there, show multiple rows looks like this. And yeah, that's great. You can have lots of rows of tracks. I find that I get easily lost in this, and I just like a long horizontal rows of tracks like a, a real mixer would be, and I just scroll over if I need to see more. I don't really like the transport bar in the middle, so I'm going to right-click it, go to docked transport position, and set this to top of main window. And that just locks it up at the top of the window. I'm going to right-click in the transport bar again and go to center transport controls. And so that puts the controls right in the middle. That's how I like to have it, uh, at least with the default theme. So let's open up the preferences. So under the Reaper menu, preferences or options, preferences. And we're going to start off with the general page. We're not going to go through every single um, setting here, but quite a few of them, I think. Maximum undo memory use. Let's just double this, 512. And I'm going to include every type. When approaching full undo, I'm going to check that. So it's going to keep the newest states. So we'll just start deleting old ones if we go past 512 megabytes for uh, undo. Now, moving on to startup settings, we've got open project, last project tabs. Personally, I like to just do new project. Um, a lot of people like the prompt option. 
loading last project has never worked for me. I'm always working on so many different things. You know, if I have an idea, I want to start off with a, an empty project and just start from scratch every single time. That's my personal preference, but you know, these are preferences and choose what works for you. Maximum projects in recent project list. I'm just gonna set this to 10. Next, we're moving on to paths and default path to save new projects. I'm just going to go to browse and then choose my project hard drive. So projects 2021, it's right there, open. Default render path. This one is safe to leave empty. It's just going to use the project folder if you have a project folder saved already, or else it's going to go into the uh, Reaper Media folder, which is already set up in your documents. Uh, default rendering uh, recording path when project is unsaved. Again, you can leave that blank and it's going to use the Reaper Media folder, which if you're not sure, it's going to be in your documents. It's going to be this folder here, Reaper Media uh, under documents. And it's going to be same place, my documents slash Reaper Media on Windows. Check this box for store peak caches in alternate path. I'm going to go to browse. We're going to find that folder on the hard drive. So it's users, Reaper blog, temp, and repeaks. And so that's where that peak cache will be. And then the last one is just an alternate. If you know you disconnect that drive or something like that, there's a, a second peak folder. I've never needed it. Now, under keyboard multi-touch, pretty much the only thing we're going to do here is prevent alt key from focusing main window. This actually has no effect on Mac, but I want to show this for the Windows users. A lot of people get frustrated by this. They try to change keyboard shortcuts to use the alt key, and then their main menu keeps popping up. Super annoying. That's the option to prevent that. You can't prevent the Windows key from uh, you know doing all the standard Windows stuff, unfortunately. It's kind of, you know, built into the operating system. If you're on a laptop, some of these other options in the multi-touch section might be of interest, not really relevant for what I'm doing, but yeah, those settings are there. Under project, when creating a new project, you can choose a template. I don't have a default template set up yet, but I would definitely use that in most cases. For project loading, look for project media and project directory before qualified path. I like to use that because that gives me the flexibility of moving projects into different folders or across different hard drives. And as long as I've managed all the media files, it just loads up instantly. But that option only works if you're really diligent with uh, actually keeping all of your media into the project folder, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And now we're on to the auto backup setup. This is so important to get set up. You know, you never know when Reaper's going to crash. And, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty stable most of the time. But as projects get big, as, you know, rare bugs happen, or if you're using a lot of plugins, it, you know, things can happen. You don't want to lose your work. So let's set this up to save every six minutes. So we're just going to change this number here from 15 to 6. When not recording, we have the option of when it stopped or any time. When not recording, that seems the, like the safest option for me. We're going to save to timestamp file in additional directory and hit browse and choose our temp folder again. And so that backups folder. Again, these are all preferences. Do what makes sense for you. These are the settings that I've used for the past over 10 years. In track send defaults, one thing in particular that I want to change here, and this is a change that started with Reaper 6. So when you record Arma track, by default, it's going to monitor input so you can hear your voice or your guitar, or whatever it is, right away. If you have an audio interface that has direct monitoring built in and, the, and you use that function, then you don't want to have both of those enabled at once. So when you're direct monitoring on your interface, you want to have monitor input turned off in Reaper. So just change that so that every new track starts with monitor input turned off. We're going to click on this record config option and uncheck monitor input. If you normally connect like input three or something as your default microphone or your, your starting point for recording, you can always change that. So you go to input mono and just change that to whatever input you're actually recording. Uh, your, your stuff is connected to most of the time. And that can save you having to change it on every single track you create. On this page, we can also change things like the default envelope point shape, default automation mode, default track height, and I don't really have any problems with leaving these on the defaults. For media item defaults, I'm gonna change a few things here. 
I'm going to uncheck create automatic fade in, fade out. I will enable overlap and crossfade items when splitting. I'm just going to set this to five milliseconds. It's a little tough to see here because of dark mode, but uh, the default fade shape, that's the one that I prefer. And then I'm going to uncheck all of these loop source options. I really hate them personally. Um, and I am going to enable the option trim content behind media items when editing. So the loop source things, if you import something and then drag one of the edges out beyond its original length, it will just start repeating. I've just never been a fan of that, and I will choose to loop something if I want it to be looped. So I have those all off by default. So I'll demonstrate what that trim contents behind media items thing does. So if I drag this item over that item, it removes that first item. If I have trim contents behind media items turned off, it will keep that item in the middle. And for me, that gets really messy. I don't like to see that. So it's a very rare situation when I find that to be helpful. So I like to have trim contents behind media items turned on. Moving on to the audio settings, I'm going to uncheck close audio device when stopped in application is inactive. Never liked that. It makes it look like uh, Reaper's unresponsive. Tiny fade out on playback stop and playback start. Turn those off. If you press play and there's like a punchy kick drum or something like that, it's always going to have this soft attack the first time you play it. And then the second time is going to be different. You're going to be so confused why if you loop something, it sounds different when you first play versus looping. It's so annoying. Turn those off. I'm also going to uncheck show non-standard stereo channel pairs. This removes the ability to uh, have stereo pairs like channels two and three. For me, one and two, three, four, five, six as pairs makes the most sense. The non-standard ones are kind of weird. It's nice to have that flexibility in a DAW. You don't al always see that. To me, that just this just cleans up that input selection menu so much. Under device, I'm going to choose my device here now. Audio Fuse, 48K sample rate, request block size, um, 512 when I'm recording, I would normally have this set to like 64. And if I'm mixing, 512 up to 1024. So under audio and playback, we're going to uncheck stop repeat playback at end of project. That will just keep the project running past the end of items. I find it kind of weird that it would just stop or go back to the start. Never been a fan of that. I'm going to send a note off at playback stop, which can help prevent uh, stuck notes in some situations, not all. On the recording page, we're going to change the file name for recorded files. I find that this gets very cluttered, having track number, track, name, the year, month, day, hours, and minutes. The day and time, that's already taken care of by the operating system. You know, it's, it's going to have a, a date stamp on it. I don't like to have the, a really long file name because if you ever import that file into the project, your track name is going to have all of that information, which you then have to truncate it to what's actually relevant. I'll just delete all of that. Go to wildcards, project information. I'm going to set this to just track name, space, dash, space, project information, rec pass. So the first thing you record on that track will be numbered one. And you can also do if you do rec pass zero, zero, it's going to have a two digit number to start with. Uh, so it's going to be zero one. You can see that in the example here. This track is unnamed. So let me apply this and call this guitar. Let's look at that example here again. And so if I record on track number 44, which is named guitar, it will be guitar space dash space zero one. And so then I know that that's the first thing that I recorded on that track. This number will automatically increment. If you didn't have that there at all, the rec pass, the first thing you record would be just named guitar. And the second one would be guitar 01. And that's where things get confusing because guitar 01 is actually take two. So not ideal. Most of the time, I don't care about the number that much, but just, you know, sometimes it's a little confusing to have take number two be labeled as zero one. You know, it's a very minor thing, doesn't really matter. Prompt to save, delete, rename new files. On stop, I'm gonna uncheck that. So that makes it always save that file when I hit record. 
you can always delete the files after, but this, you know, I've seen so many people uh, always clicking save on that pop-up window every single time. The extra step of having to grab the mouse, having to click the button every time you record, it's, yeah, it just, it adds up. It's a lot of wasted time, in my opinion. If you hit record and you hit stop, it should always save that file. Um, it's much safer that way. Under loop recording, I'm going to check this option, loop recording, discard incomplete first or last takes if at least one full loop was recorded. And the threshold for a complete take is 90%. If you stop a little bit early, as long as it's within 90% of the full length of that time selection um, or the loop selection, it will keep all of that. But if you go past the loop point and then stop on beat two or something like that, it will discard that last take so you don't have these sh really short, incomplete takes cluttering up your takes list. All that audio is still there. If you ever need it, you can just drag out the edge of the item, but this just simplifies loop recording a lot. Uh, gets rid of takes you don't need, you're never going to use, things like that. On the rendering preference page, we've got block size to use when rendering. I'm just gonna put in 1024, Sometimes your render speed is determined by this. So certain projects will will render faster or slower depending on this number or depending on the audio device you have connected. And I don't think that should be the case. So 1024 seems to be um, a good setting for fast rendering regardless of the project. On the appearance page, I'm going to uncheck tooltips for UI elements. This just reduces a bit of lag that you might see uh, when you're moving faders and things like that. So um, sometimes this tooltip actually makes it move slowly. Kind of depends on the system here. But uh, yeah, this, this moves much smoother. For preferences, appearance media, I'm going to enable the button here, no effects. And I'm also going to change this to no handle and enable the volume knob. That puts a couple icons on the items. On a MIDI item, it would be velocity, but for audio items, that becomes volume. And also have a button to bring up the effects chain for that track. If you have effects chains saved already, uh, right click on that button will give you a shortcut list for that. But in general, I just find that a lot faster um, than, well, you'd have to go to like, Item properties, and then take effects, and then add it there. That's just too slow. You can also experiment with things like um, draw labels above the item instead of on the item, and that looks like that. And when ma maximum legibility of the items is important, having the labels above the item does make that a lot easier to read. There are a few things I like to change under editing behavior. Move edit cursor to start of time selection on time selection change. So with that off, it looks like this. My edit cursor is still there, even though my time selection is over here. If I hit apply and make a time selection, next time I press play, it's going to start there. And also I can make um, edits that affect the start point of that time selection there. I do like to have my loop points linked to time selection I find that to be the fastest way, but uh, a lot of people will use time selections and loop points for different things. For editing behavior and envelope display, I like to set my volume envelope range from infinity to plus 12. My default per take pitch envelope range will be 24. For the editing behavior and mouse, I like to check this option, ignore mouse wheel on all faders. And so that prevents me from moving the mouse over a fader, uh, over the mixer. And I've, if I just want to scroll the mixer horizontally, it's not changing the track volumes. With this setting, I'm still able to do things like changing the tempo using the mouse wheel. But um, yeah, track faders won't accidentally be moved when scrolling the track list or the mixer list. There's so many mouse modifiers that we could change. If I had to choose one that's like the most important, I would go to arrange view, right drag, change my default from marquee select items to marquee select items and set time selection. By default, it looks like this. If I make a marquee selection by right dragging, it would select any items there. Well, let me just draw in some items here on different tracks. If I right click, 
uh, right drag over that. It selects the items, but it doesn't it doesn't move my cursor and it doesn't set my time selection. And so by applying this setting, so items and time get set with the same motion, I right drag over these and my cursor is moved because of that previous setting that we chose. And my time selection is for the length that I dragged over there. I find it very quick to select these things. I got really used to that setting uh, and have used that for many years. I'm gonna show the volume envelope on this track and we'll change one other thing in mouse modifiers. So I'm gonna go to envelope segment. So the default is move envelope segment ignoring time selection. And if I want to just manipulate this section here, um, a drag on this is going to move the entire envelope and that's not what I want. So let's undo that. And we're gonna set this to move envelope segment and press apply. And now within the time selection, if I drag this, it's going to add in edge points and it's only made a change within that time selection. And if I have points in there already, those will be adjusted. And there's a very, very short transition time uh, in there, which I believe is this setting here. So transition time for automatically created envelope edge points, 0 0.5. So it's a half millisecond transition time, which is a tiny amount and I think is a good setting to have. As I said, there's so many mouse modifier things that you could change. I'm just gonna cut it off at there, just showing you two. If you're new to Reaper, I want you to know that anything that you could do with left drag, right drag, left click, double click, almost everything can be adjusted within this page of the preferences. So media item, left drag, left click, double click, um, the track context for a double click, you can change um, things there. So clicks and drags are in mouse modifiers. And then mouse wheel and keyboard is in the action list. Under preferences, media, copy imported media to project directory. So if you're importing samples, grabbing things from other projects, putting them into a project, it's going to copy that those items into your project media directory. And while it does take up a little bit more disk space, you're much less likely to lose files when you move your project. Yeah, everything that belongs to the project tends to stay within the project using this option, copy imported media. For media MIDI, we've got this option, MIDI octave name display offset. We're gonna set this to minus one. It's a little hard to explain. I found that minus one tends to work best with any third-party plugins. So if you press the key on your keyboard and you see the key light up on the interface, it just seems to make more sense when you set it to minus one. Um, but also the actual numbers um, will change. So if you have this on zero octaves, and MIDI note 32 might not be triggering 32 in uh, a certain plugin, so it's an octave off. Setting this to minus one tends to solve a lot of those issues. Everything else here, I'm gonna leave the same. For video, we're gonna set this to only use VLC. Um, I do a lot of videos in Reaper, and for me, that's been the best setting. For actually installing Reaper extensions, check out my previous videos on that. When moving audio item, seek video frame to snap offset of audio item. Jumping ahead to the preferences plugins VST page, this option bypass audio when opening plugin config window. This is something that I would check if I was getting crashes while plugins were being inserted into project. So if I'm consistently seeing plugins crashing Reaper uh, the first time I open them, um, then this may be an option. The downside is that it uh, silences your project momentarily um, as it's importing that, and that can make it a lot more stable. So just keep that one in mind. If you're getting crashes, that can help. So that's it for preferences. So now we're going to the project settings, which is this I button here in the main toolbar. You can also go, uh, you can also go to the file menu and find project settings there. And so in here, we're going to set our project to 48K. We're going to set time base for items to beats position only, and all the other settings there are fine. Under media, we're going to set a folder called audio files. So every time we save a project, a new folder called audio files will be created in the same location. 
and then any audio files that are in your project will be saved there. Anything you record goes there. Super easy to manage your media that way. And I'm not going to worry about any of the other settings here. I'm just going to hit save as default project settings. And then next time I save a project, it's going to have those settings already. One more little thing in the interface, if we right click in the info display box, I'm gonna set this to CPU RAM use time since last save, enable that. So that puts in, well, that information that I just chose. By default, it's just gonna show some information about the selected tr uh, track and item de details. Um, which it will it will switch to that when you actually move the mouse and things like that. I'm going to go over to the main toolbar and just do some right clicking around and making sure that various things are enabled. So if I right click on the crossfade button, um, I have all three of these enabled. If I right click on the grouping, I want to enable select one selects group. Under ripple edit, ripple edit all effects tempo map, I would want that one on. For the envelope button, envelope points, envelope point selection follows time selection. I'm going to enable that. Just for saving time, we're going to skip a few things like setting up the metronome. I've done videos on that in detail, um, so we'll just leave that as is. All right, so now we're going into the action list and finding the default six theme adjuster. Let's run that. It brings up this window, and this gives us a few options for um, configuring things. So we can globally change some colors and um, I'm actually gonna open up one of the windows that kind of looked funny. Media Explorer. And uh, let's bring up a media item defaults. Yeah, so I'm just gonna tweak these colors a little bit so these, these look a bit better. So I'm gonna change the gamma to start with. So I've tweaked this a little bit. Gamma at 1.08, highlights at minus 0.10, midtones at 0.05, shadows at normal, saturation just slightly above at 104%. And we've resolved some issues here, but one of them that we can't resolve here is the, um, the color of the fade shapes, which I think is just a bug of using dark mode on the Mac. So that's the global settings page. Let's go over to the track control panel. Layout A is your default, so Anything you set here is going to be used for every new track when you create them. Anywhere where it says hide, I'm gonna uncheck that. So just every option is available uh, at all times. So I can see my, my record arm, my monitor input button, the effects chain, automation mode, my pan. I don't like that the pan is in that position, but it is what it is, um, and my input. Uh, my input mode, my record mode here, and my um, input selection. The record mode will only be shown if the track is record armed. And I think that kind of cleans up things a lot. I also want to change like the minimum size for the, the name, because I don't usually have my, my track like set that wide. I don't know. 110 looks about right. So as I said, this is the kind of default for any new track that you create, we'll use that. You can set things another way, like, uh, like layout C, and you press 100% to apply that, and that will change that. Uh, but when you make a new track, it's always gonna go back to layout A. For the mixer, I don't care too much about any of these settings. I do kind of like the border on the left edge, and I turn off meter expansion yeah, and I make sure that element labels are there all the time. All right, so now we're going to the action list and we're gonna set our zoom and scroll. So if we search for zoom mouse wheel, uh, we want zoom horizontally, which is this one here. By default, it's just mouse wheel and I don't like that. And so I'm gonna clear all that and I want option mouse wheel or alt mouse wheel to do that. And override, yes. So this is just my preference. Option mouse wheel is zoom in in a lot of apps. So I like that. If you're finding that it is going in the opposite direction, you would use this zoom horizontally reverse. So it's gonna depend on the mouse you use or other system settings. For zoom vertically, this is on command mouse wheel. So that's, that's essentially track height. 
That's doing all tracks. If you do um, track height, adjust, select the track heights with a mouse wheel. Default is command shift mouse wheel. I'll just delete that and do, yeah. So this particular mouse says horizontal wheel, but it is, um, it is the normal mouse wheel motion. So that does select a track. And if I take off the shift sh modifier, it's going to do all tracks. All right, so scrolling. So if I want to just mouse wheel up and down anywhere in the track, I want that to be scrolling through the list of tracks, the same as if I had my mouse hovered over the left, but just anywhere. So we're going to filter this list by scroll mouse wheel. And so that's scroll vertically. I'm gonna delete that, add mouse wheel. There we go. So that's looking good. And the other thing, scrolling horizontally. So that's already set up the way that I want with shift. Right now my mouse wheel speed is a little off, but that's actually um, because I'm sharing my PC mouse over to my Mac. Um, not really an issue of Reaper itself, but if I wanted to change that, I would change this. Um, I would uncheck throttle mouse events for wheel. And so that's significantly faster. This video has gone on a lot longer than I thought, but we're almost to the end here. A couple more things in the theme development window. So if I look for uh, selected, what I'm looking for here is draw selected bar on selected media item. I'm gonna enable that. And then I'm going to choose a color. So I'll just set this to, um, I usually do like a blue. I don't know. Let's do something like that. We'll do this green. And so when I have this item selected, there's this bar over it. And it's just a little bit clearer which item is selected when there's multiple items here. Obviously, there's the highlight, but like regardless of custom color for a, a, an item, I'll set the item to a random color. That green bar is still there. So I find that to be really helpful. If I search for take in this window, there's also the option of drawing a colored uh, bar on active media take. And so if I have multiple takes in an item, so let's do copy and then do a paste as takes. Okay. So now the item has a green line and then I've got this neon green for the selected take. So it's not incredibly important to have that, but I find that just pops out a little bit better. In this window, you can also customize grid colors, search for grid, and so grid lines, start of beats. So let's just actually go opposite colors. So white, and so this is black. We'll just change that to, to white. And, uh, and also there's the MIDI editor stuff as well. So Let's do this and let's do pink. And so I've got these pink lines and white um, grid lines. That brings me to this setting. I search for grid. I've got the option of uh, dotted grid lines. So I'll disable that. And now I have solid lines for the grids. That really makes them stand out a lot better, especially when screen recording. And then there's this other option here, grid line Z order through items. You can set it to over items. Um, that puts it um, kind of above the waveforms if there's any waveforms there. And if we set it to under items, that puts it to the back. So, so you can't see the grid lines through the items anymore. And for certain things that makes it a lot easier. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to see. For me, through items, I think makes a lot of sense. So this video has gone on much longer than I had originally thought when I was planning this, but that just means that it's more filled with information for you to, to help you. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the sponsor Skillshare. They're a huge supporter of the channel and uh, it's a great value what they're offering here. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.